Hello and thank you for joining us. My name is Eric Hudson, Product Marketing Manager for Azure SQL Database, and I'm joined today by Kevin Farley, the Program Manager on our SQL Database Engineering Team. Today we're going to talk about performance and scale, and how you can unlock new growth potential for your applications. You know, Kevin, you know, we talk to a lot of customers who are really actively driving digital transformation throughout their organizations, and what they're finding is that this success is increasingly a function of their ability to manage the large volume of data and to ultimately harness its potential. That's right. Developers are building more intelligent and immersive applications than ever. And these apps can be resource intensive. The last thing you want is to be constrained by resource limitations that ultimately impact their customer's experience. Unfortunately though, limits are often a fact of life for an application developer. We consistently hear stories of how developers run up against database compute, storage, and memory limitations that ultimately impact the application performance. Yeah, and, and the consequences of all that are real. You know, particularly with these larger data operations, you know, often they'll have to you know, spend more time compensating for platform limitations or dealing with higher latency or, or even downtime. So, so given all of this, how are we helping customers with these very large workloads? We have a great solution called Hyperscale. Mm. Hyperscale is a new cloud-native solution purpose-built to address common cloud scalability limits with either compute, storage, memory, or combinations of all three. Mm. And best of all, you can harness Hyperscale without re-architecting your application. That's pretty huge for an application developer. Yeah. The technology implementation of Hyperscale is optimized for different scenarios and customized by database engine. Mm -hmm. For example, on Azure SQL database, we fundamentally re-architected the SQL Server storage engine to independently scale out compute and storage to support very large databases. Mm -hmm. On Azure Database for PostgreSQL, Hyperscale is developed through horizontal scale out of the queries and database across multiple nodes. Wow, so, so high performance and scale and I don't have to re-architect my apps. That, that's great to hear. But can you tell me a little bit more about how we are implementing Hyperscale for Azure SQL Database? Azure SQL Database is powered by a highly scalable storage architecture that enables a database to grow as needed with support up to 100 terabytes, effectively limiting the, eliminating the need to pre-provision storage resources. Additionally, Hyperscale database backups are virtually instantaneous, and the time required to restore a database or to scale up or down is no longer tied to the volume of data. In fact, database restorations can now be done in only a matter of minutes. For read-intensive workloads, Hyperscale provides rapid scale out by provisioning extra read replicas needed for offloading read workloads. The new services also provides the ability to scale compute and storage resources independently, giving you the flexibility to optimize performance for your workloads. Wow, so backing up 100 terabytes, you know, let alone restoring it, is, is really no small feat. Uh, so you're telling me that you can back up a hyperscaled SQL database almost instantly, and then you can restore it in minutes? I mean, doesn't that oftentimes take hours or even days? Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about how we're enabling this? Unlike traditional database engines that have centralized all of the data, database management functions in one location, one process, Hyperscale separates the query engine from the storage engine, mm. and we've turned the storage engine into a series of uh, scale-out microservices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This way, the storage capacity can be smoothly scaled out as far as needed. The initial target is 100 terabytes. Read-only replicas of the same compute components share the same storage components, mm -hmm. so there's no copy of data, no additional data to uh, configure for the read replicas. So a hyperscale database has three major components. Mm -hmm. The compute node the query, is where the query engine lives. Mm -hmm. um, so all the query logic resides in that engine, and it's exactly the same query engine logic that SQL Server and Azure SQL Database share. It's all exactly the same, so there's no transition that's needed. Um, and then that can be replicated. Mm -hmm. um, compute nodes have SSD-based cache, so we cache data on the compute node, and the cache is proportional to the number of cores. Okay. Uh, so you get fast access to that data that's, that's cached, that's used frequently. Mm -hmm. There's one primary node that does, handles the read-write workload, and then you can add in a number of readable, read-only secondary compute nodes. Okay. So for large reporting workloads, they can be routed to the read-only nodes while your update traffic goes to the primary node. Mm -hmm. 
That way you don't impact either one with each other. Okay. Um, then there's the log service, which takes the, the transaction log, mm -hmm. um, so the compute nodes write directly to Azure Premium Storage directly. Mm -hmm. So it's highly durable as soon as it hits that Azure Premium Storage and we can finish the transaction at that point. Mm -hmm. The log service then takes data out of that landing zone and forwards it into long-term storage and also takes the updates in that log stream and reflects them to the other replicas, the read-only replicas, so they can update their pages as well as the page servers, which are the ultimate storage for the data. Got it. Page servers are the final piece and that's where the data resides. Uh, it's a scale-out architecture where each page server has a fixed amount of storage, uh, not only about 128 gigabytes of storage worth of data pages. Mm -hmm. And the interface there is at the page level. So everything above that is completely unchanged for the data engine. The page servers then have, each page server manages 128 gigabytes worth mm -hmm. of pages. Mm -hmm. When we get close to filling one, we just add another seamlessly. So there's not even a max size parameter for really? an Azure SQL database. Oh, wow. Hyperscale. Uh -huh. um, so no pages stored on more than one, one replica of the page servers. Mm -hmm. So the, the page servers are really the secret sauce and that below the page server, we have Azure Premium Storage. Mm -hmm. So that's where the long-term storage is, it's durable, and it provides us the ability to do snapshots, which becomes very important. Mm -hmm. We have a full uh, caching, SSD caching in the page server, so the whole amount of data that the page server manages is cached in local SSD. Mm -hmm. So you're never going all the way down to the Azure standard storage to get your data, it's mm -hmm. coming out of local SSD. Mm -hmm. With the Azure standard storage blobs underneath, they can do snapshots and that's how the backups are done. Mm -hmm. So the backups uh, are done with snapshots which the application never even feels. Restoring them then becomes very quickly because we just take a set of snapshots, um, instantiate them as writable volumes mm -hmm. and roll them forward to the point in time desired and then create the rest of the elements, restore the database, recover the database and we're online. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay. So here we have a database that's 50 terabytes. So it's a very large database there. Um, so you can see there that, that it's 50 terabytes of actual data. This isn't just an empty shell, the, mm -hmm. the total data sized is 54 terabytes. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna give it a name. Um, we're gonna pick a point in time to restore to and hit go. That's as simple as it is to do a point in time restore. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't restore over the existing database. It's always uh, restore to, a, to the side, to a unique name. Mm -hmm. um, so I've started a timer off on the right side so you'll know how long it takes. Um, so up here I'm gonna show there's an activity monitor so we can see when this uh, gets to be done. Mm -hmm. And again, the, what's happening in the background here is that we're, we've taken a set of snapshots. The snapshots aren't necessarily coordinated with each other, but mm -hmm. we've defined a point in time that we want the database to go to. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll find the set of snapshots that is the, th the set that is immediately before mm -hmm. that, that point in time that we desire to go to, mm -hmm. and we're provisioning the page servers for them, instantiating them, and we'll pull the log out of the long-term log storage mm -hmm. into the new uh, instance that we've stood up, mm -hmm. and then we'll roll the database forward. So now we've clipped out some time so we don't have to spend as much time just waiting. You'll see we're up to a little over seven minutes. And again, this is a 50 terabyte database. That means that there are, in, in this case, about 100 page servers that we're coordinating here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're a little over seven minutes into the restore of 50 terabytes worth of data. Um, so you'll see down in the list in the bottom that there's, you'll see the new page or database pop up, indicating that it's, um, it's been restored and it's doing recovery. So it's mm -hmm. bringing the database online at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and momentarily, you'll see it come online and we'll be all done. Um, so again, there we go. The database is recovered, fully recovered, seven minutes, 51 seconds to restore 50 terabytes of data.
Well, Kevin, that's a that's a really innovative approach to high performance scalability. You know, for our, for our customers, what we're really enabling are the the benefits of you know very large workloads with without all the headaches. Is that right? Exactly. SQL database hyperscale significantly expands the potential for application growth without being limited by storage size. Got it. So if I think about the, the, the types of scenarios that this would be best for, it seems like SQL database hyperscale uh, is, is really optimized for OLTP and HTAP workloads, correct? Yes, not only that, but you can use SQL database hyperscale to satisfy most any workload with highly scalable storage and read scale requirements. Unlike a lot of data warehouse configurations, it performs very well for OLTP style applications, but we find there's a lot of workloads that are a mix of OLTP and analytics workloads, and that's where this technology really shines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so if you're looking for a large on-premises workloads and data marts running on SMP, so single compute node, that's really the target for this. Mm -hmm. There are data warehouse workloads that have the scaled out compute that benefit from that, and that's not the target we're going after here, but very large workloads that are single processor, um, OLTP, and analytics apps. Yeah, that's right, and, and remember, SQL Database Hyperscale is a service tier of Azure SQL Database, so in addition to um, all the fast backups, restores, the you know, up to 100 terabyte support, uh, our customers also get to benefit from it being a fully managed service. Uh, it's also built upon the same engine as, as SQL Server, so there's all that goodness that comes with that. Uh, in addition, they get the built-in intelligence so they can optimize performance and security, as well as the built-in HA with up to a 99.99% SLA. You know, Kevin, plus our customers can take advantage of all the cost-saving offers that we have, like the Azure Hybrid benefit. You know, I want to thank you for joining us today. And thank you for having me. Absolutely, and, and to everybody watching. You know, we hope you learned a lot and are ready to give it a try. What I invite you to do is to visit aka.ms WAC SQLDB underscore hyperscale to learn more. And visit the Azure portal and spin up a hyperscale database for yourself. Thank you again for joining us.